What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over what I think is the best loadout right now in Zero Build in Chapter 5. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more, and comment down below what your favorite setup is. So, for starters, this video is early. Every time a new season drops or every time there's like a massive shift, people ask me to make a video like this. And I'm making it early on in the season. It's definitely possible that things change, not only my opinion on things, but also the game itself. Uh, because there is like you know weapon buffs and nerfs over the course of the season so just keep that in mind the first thing i want to talk about is going to be the sniper rifle i think this is the best weapon in fortnite chapter 5 it is incredibly good compared to past snipers i feel like the bullet travel time on it is like really fast and with the assault rifles being projectile this season meaning the bullets for the assault rifles also have bullet drop and bullet travel time it makes the ars harder to use at longer range or just like less consistent to use at longer range so I've been using the sniper a lot for those situations and I think it's going to be the meta this season not only because the sniper itself is very good but because the ARs have kind of taken a step back on their ranged effectiveness. For my attachments on the sniper I like to use the 2x sight, the angled foregrip for faster aim down sight speed, and the suppressor attachment. Uh, some people like to use the red dot on the sniper or the 1.35x. Some people like to use the 4x scope. I think the only time you have sniper glint is if you're using the 4x scope. I'm decently sure if you're using anything under 4x, you don't have glint on the sniper, which is kind of crazy. Um, and just in general, I think it is very, very good. I'm not someone who snipes much in recent Fortnite, but I've been using it a lot this season, and I think it's definitely worth using. Uh, for the assault rifle, I like the striker AR, I think, more because I'm using the sniper. If I wasn't going to use the sniper and I just wanted like a main like ranged assault rifle, the Nemesis AR is probably better for those long range fights. But since I'm going to be using my sniper for those really long range fights, I would rather have the striker, which is a little bit better at like close to medium range because it has that... Uh, that high fire rate and the striker ar also doubles well as a kind of shotgun complement weapon because it does have a really solid fire rate and a solid hip fire spread if i'm able to get the mythic version of this weapon i'm very happy at uh, i think it's fencing fields is what that poi is called been landing there a decent amount the mythic striker ar is very good for my attachments on the striker ar if i'm not going to be using the mythic one I like to go for one of the low magnification sights if I'm going to use a sight at all. And then either angled foregrip or the laser sight because those kind of sure up your close range. The angled foregrip will allow you to aim down sights faster, which can be helpful. The laser sight will allow you to hip fire more accurately. And if you're going to be using this to combo with a shotgun, that's great. For the barrel, I go for the muzzle break. Uh, and then the mag size, the mag attachment is up to you. I've just been going speed mag because I feel like a lot of the drum mags don't add enough to the magazine to really make them worth using. I, I would rather just reload faster. I think it goes from like 25 to 32, which can matter, but like I would rather just reload faster at that point. And I mostly play solos, so that probably uh, take comes into account there. So we have our sniper for really long range or just more range in general, especially with the lower magnifi magnification like 2x, you can use the sniper at you know medium range just fine. And it's almost better to use the sniper in medium range because you don't have to be exposed for very long to get damage off, you know? For shotguns this season, I'm not really sure which I prefer yet. I think they're both fine, but I think a lot of zero build players are probably gonna prefer the auto shotgun just because like the high fire rate shotguns have just always been really good in zero build and the auto shotgun this season feels fine. Uh, again, if I'm able to get the mythic version of this, I am very happy. It's very good. Uh, but both shotguns, I think, are solid. I don't really mind using either of them. I've kind of gone back and forth. Sometimes I go just based off like which mythic I have or which higher rarity I have or which one I feel like using at that time. Obviously, the pump does need a complement weapon or a follow-up weapon more than the drum does, but the striker AR can fill that void just fine, I think, as a spray weapon. The SMGs are probably better, but I would rather not use an SMG and then just have the striker AR as my follow-up weapon and my medium range weapon. So I don't, I don't think you're really going wrong either either way with the shotgun but if you just want the simplest easiest choice to get wins right now the drum shoddy is probably going to be the best and i also like the drum shoddy for dealing with riot shield users if i do have to have a fight versus them th those fights are rough uh so having the drum shoddy to just kind of like jump around and get behind them and just spam out shots i think works quite well whereas the pump you do have to worry about that timing more for attachments I like to go laser sight or angled foregrip on the shotgun. It just depends if you're going to be someone that aims a decent amount. For the drum, I pretty much always go laser. Sometimes for the pump, I want the angled foregrip. I typically don't use a sight on my shotgun 
for now, but I, I've seen clips of it and it seems like it can be good, especially because the range on these shotguns is solid, uh, the pump more so. So like using like a red dot and an angled foregrip can be a solid setup if that's something you want to do. And then quick mag, I also prefer to use on the auto shotgun rather than the drum because the the auto shotgun's reload is terribly slow like it's very bad i think that's like the biggest weakness of the auto shotgun honestly it's just how bad its reload is and the drum makes it go from eight bullets to 12 which it is an increase but it's i feel like you're still gonna have to be reloading pretty consistently and so again i would just rather reload faster and you know get it done this might just be because i play solos but even when i was playing squad ranked the other day i preferred to just use the faster mag and get the reload off faster rather than reloading super slowly anytime that gets interrupted it's just you know really unfortunate uh for heals i've been mostly taking bigs this season but if i find shieldfish i would rather have those it's just not as common for me to get shieldfish this season because i'm not as acclimated with where like all the coolers spawn and stuff you know the medallions make it so you regenerate shield, and I have been pretty consistently landing at mythic POIs to get the medallion and then trying to push other players who have the medallions. And that's one of the reasons why I want to carry big pots, because the medallions capping out at 50 with minis, like oftentimes by the time you drink one mini, you've already regenerated a decent amount of health. But you, you got to use what you can find. Sometimes I'm not annoyed to have minis. And if you do have multiple medallions, you could just not carry a healing item at all or not carry a shield item. I've seen a lot of people saying they just take med kits instead of a shield item because they have the medallions to heal shield. And I think that can definitely work if you have several, but if you only have one medallion or maybe like one or two, I wouldn't really want my only healing item to be a med kit at that time. If you have all of them, then sure, you're gonna heal so fast off the medallion that you could just go for no heals or only white heals. But I've found that I don't really get max medallions until really late into the game. Uh, so I've just been carrying bigs and then if I can get one or two medallions, that's great. If I can get more, that's awesome. I like to have bigs still when my medallion isn't like super built when I'm not regening super fast because you know, if you're in a sticky situation and someone's pushing you, you might have time to get that big off and then your medallion healing you as well. You might end up with like 70 shield by the time it takes you to drink that big. Whereas like if you only use a medallion, you might only have had gotten like 20 in that time. You know, those numbers are a rough estimate, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Uh, it's just nice to be able to heal plus have the medallion ticking in certain situations so that's why i typically carry shield but i do understand why some people would just carry med kits if they do have several medallions for mobility i prefer the shockwaves the grapple item i don't even know what it's called but it's a grapple something feels weird to use i haven't gotten used to it yet i have started to enjoy it more over time like my opinion on it is definitely higher than it was the first day like i've gotten more time to use it but still, I would just rather have shockwaves 100% of the time. I really like shockwaves. If you guys watch the channel, you know that. And I'm already comfortable with them, whereas like the grapple takes time to use. And maybe, you know, as the season goes on, I end up liking it more. But the things you could do with shockwaves are just really nice. You could shockwave people off of cover when there's a lot of mountains on this zone. So that can be helpful. Shockwave people out of bushes. If you're having a hard time dealing with riot shielders, you can shockwave them away from you or potentially into storm. You could shockwave to a different angle and beam the riot shielder. It's just like there's so much you can do in a fight with shockwaves. It's a very versatile mobility item. So if I am able to find several, I'm definitely going to want to take those. Uh... But, you know, that's kind of the, if you don't find shockwaves, then I'm definitely much happier to have the grapple blade than just nothing at all, you know? Cars can also be really helpful this season. I want to have one as much as possible. Not only can Storm be a bit scuffed, but there's a lot of mountains on the map that just make it harder to navigate. And when you do have a car, you can drive up them sometimes. And then you also have the mobile cover, which is really nice because... Uh, there's no bunkers or anything like that in the game, and a lot of players are using snipers. So just being able to constantly have that mobile cover is very, very helpful, and you can serve shockwaves in some instances when you're just driving around. So I think cars and snipers are going to be much more important this season than they have in like recent seasons of Zero Builds. And then I'm not going to talk about the Riot Shield. A lot of people are probably like, yo, the Riot Shield is really good, and you know that's maybe true, but I would prefer not to use that. I think it's really lame. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets nerfed in some way uh, going forward in the season. And I think as people get more accustomed to dealing with the Riot Shield, it's not going to be as impactful as it is now. But either way, I, I just think it's really lame and I don't want to play like that. So that's not what I recommend. But if you guys like using it, you know, that's your choice. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful, informative, interesting. If you did, remember to give it a like, subscribe, like some more, comment down below what your favorite setup has been to use so far in Chapter 5. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.